This is Dr. Matt Barber of Alabama Orthopedic Clinic. We are proud supporters of Ransom Reprogram, Ransom Ministries, and all of the good work that they do in our community. If you would like to learn more about us, check us out at alortho.com or barbertotaljoint.com. You can also hear more from me personally on the Ortho Real podcast. Thank you again for allowing us to be involved with Ransom Ministries and all of the great work that they do. Hey, welcome to the Ransom Experience. My name is Matt Armbruster, Executive Director of Ransom Ministries. You're going to hear stories from people that we've served and people that serve alongside us, as well as those that we partner with throughout our community. You're going to hear about decisions they made throughout their life and things that happened through different avenues of their life that caused them to go down a path that they didn't see themselves going. And then also those decisions that they have to make on a daily basis to stay away from those decisions that they made in the past. Ransom Ministries empowers people to utilize their God-given gifts and talents in their career and for their community. All along the way, we learn how to help those close to us and also maybe even help ourselves. This is real. This is raw. This is Ransom. This show is brought to you by Ransom Recycling, your number one choice for electronic recycling in Mobile, Alabama. Help reduce waste in our landfills by recycling all of your unwanted, unused, and non-working electronics. Ransom Recycling is a division of Ransom Ministries that is helping to put men and women back to work. Check out RansomMinistries.com for a complete list of acceptable items. Drop-offs and pickups can be easily scheduled through the website. Please note that we are not accepting TVs at this time. Ransom Recycling, open 8 to 3, Monday through Friday. Help our planet while helping men and women re-enter the workforce. With every start, we are born again. Open your heart, spend less time in your head. Welcome to the Ransom Experience. You know, last week we covered um, some of our curriculum. I hope you enjoyed that repair stage that's always the roughest part of our program um, for the students and for the teachers because we it's like tearing a band-aid off of a sore but we also teach them that man if you don't heal that sore up the right way it's just going to get infected so we're trying to it it causes pain a lot of times and causes us to reevaluate us but mostly uh, hopefully it's a repair stage so then we can go into this next stage which is rebuild So Rebuild, we talk about in session six about the ideal employee. Our objective, we'll talk about the ideal employee being a person of character. You notice we talk a lot about character because we believe that that is the ultimate thing that's going to make you a good employee. And you're going to work when no one's watching. You're going to do the things that you're supposed to do without being told. You're even going to do it without making more money. You're just going to do it. You're going to go there because your job is to glorify God, not to make money. The money's just added to it. We get jobs not to because of the paycheck. Because if you work a job because of a paycheck, then you will get bored with it or you'll expect more or it'll get harder. So you want to go into it with how I'm here to be a person of character. We're going to, we talk in this session about Joseph. If any of you know the story of Joseph, he was sold into slavery by his brothers, um, had all the intentions, all the reasons in the world to be mad because bad things had happened to him. But ultimately, he just did what he was supposed to do. I got I got one of my teachers. He has a quote in this book, and I really want to read it. It says, character is the things deep down inside us that make us who we are. Character ultimately drives our thoughts and our actions. It doesn't mean that if we mess up, we have a ba- we have bad character. Good character admits mistakes and works to be better. How we respond to times of adversity or trouble is what ultimately defines our character. Character does not necessarily show itself in good times. It's easy to have good character and actions when everything is going my way. Character shows itself when the odds are stacked against us. That's from one of our teachers, Chad Anderson, and he's um he's a great teacher, but I think he's, if you ask him, he's probably got more out of teaching these classes than he's ever been able to give. 
So we read the scripture about Joseph and we talk about the hardships he went through. And, you know, he was accused of things he didn't do. He was put in prison. He was all these different things, but he still kept his character. He wouldn't do the things that that most of us would probably have done. Um, So some negative character traits we cover are disrespectful, sloppiness, carelessness, low self-esteem, impatient, dishonest, unreliable, undependable, cowardly, indecisive, quitter, undisciplined, uncommitted, unforgiving, disobedient, mean, negative, and sarcastic. Those are things that aren't good traits. Positive sides of that are hardworking, dedicated, full of integrity, courageous, obedient, good listener, observant, kind, patient, willing to try, detailed, forgiving, positive, careful, honest, dependable, disciplined, and committed. Those are the things we cover. And then we talk about what are my positive character traits that I have? What are some of my negative ones? And then we ask a worksheet. We have a worksheet that they say, what did you learn from Joseph that you most related to? Have you ever felt like your life was ruined by something done to you or something you did? List some character traits you can see in Joseph's life. So those are the questions they ask at the end of the day. So we always try to ask at the end of the day questions that will make them think about themselves, about us. And when I read them, it makes me think about myself. So it's for everybody. Then we do vision boards. That's one of our hands-on projects, cognitive therapy. We take pictures of what we want to do. But I try to turn it into not just put a picture of a nice fancy house and a nice car. That's that's great. But what, how are you going to get to that? What's your vision to get to that? So we put in there maybe classroom where they're going to school to get their degree or um, a job where they're making money and then a savings account. So a bank where they're putting money away or investments. And that's their way to get to that. Because a lot of times on our vision boards, we'll put on their Oh, I want this fancy house. I want to take all these vacations. I want to do all that. That's great. That's a great vision. But how are you going to, how you visualize yourself getting there? So that's kind of what we work on as our vision boards is, hey, let's visualize where we want to go. Then we go into session seven, which is our goal setting session. So a lot of the times we have, most people have never set goals because, you know, all of us say, oh yeah, yeah, I set goals. You don't write them down. You don't move forward. They're just dreams. They're not goals. So we want to set realistic employment goals, develop a strong vocational plan during this class, practicing problem-solving skills, avoiding negative body language, importance of posture. We go over SMART goals, and we talk about those. So we work through successful habits, unsuccessful habits. So we successful habit is give compliments. One is the unsuccessful is to criticize. One is to set goals. One is to feel entitled. One is to plan. One is to never plan keep learning, being arrogant, thankful, being ungrateful, negative body language, crossing your arms, slouching, frozen smile, frowning, positive would be smiling, soft eye contact, good posture, handshakes, uh, initiating introduction. So we talk about this because we're setting them up for when we do mock interviews and when we do those things or when they go on a, a job interview. So you identify the groups of people that you need to work with when you're setting a goal right? You don't want to set a goal with someone that's going to be negative and say, oh, that'll never work. You can't do that. Um, I would have never be sitting here if it was, if I was listening to all the negative that was in my life with people that I've shared my visions with, but we share them with people that are going to encourage you, people that are going to, now you want people to be honest and say, hey, you might not want to do it that way, but you also want them people that will encourage you. Um, And so we go into SMART goals, which is specific, measurable, attainable, reasonable, and timely. So we we give them examples of, hey, I want to go on a trip. So that's my goal. So when do I want to go on that trip by and how am I going to get there? So it's a whole thing about how am I going to get to that? Not just the dream of going on a trip, but actually setting out a plan to get there. And many of us, even our young people, um, people in our communities, not necessarily just homeless, drug addict, um, criminals. Um, everyone needs to learn how to set goals and how to work towards those goals and not let things get in the way. I tell my um, people that have been in drug addiction, I say with the same tenacity that you went after the next high or the same tenacity you went after the next criminal activity or whatever it was or do that for your goals. Don't let nobody get in the way because people are going to try to stumble you, especially if you've been doing bad. They don't want to see you do good because then that makes them look at themselves. 
They don't want you to do well because then they got to, again, look at themselves. So don't listen to the crowd. You know, you got to set your plan and stick to it and do what you're so to. So you want to work on short-term goals, right? And then the worksheet for seven is identifying your goal. Set a deadline for that for it to be achieved. And many times I set, we set goals that are small first that we know that because many of the people we serve, including ourselves, we need a victory, man. We need somebody. We need some victories. You know, I tell people all the time, you know, I play, I went to school. We didn't win a whole lot of games at K-State or Garden City or wherever. Um, but man, them victories were sweet when we did have them. Isn't it nice to win? And sometimes the people around us have been losing most of their life. At least that's what they feel. So they need a victory. So I say, man, let's just set a goal, man, that we know we can do. Let's just lay it out. And I understand that's the attainable part. You don't want them too easy, but, man, I'm telling you, at first, they need to be pretty easy. You know, there's sometimes I write on my to-do list something that I've already done so I can wipe it off because I use a dry erase board when I do it. So what I do with mine and I teach the classes that I set up a quadrant for my goals, right, on a big dry erase board that's in front of me all the time. And I have my yearly goals in one one quadrant. Then I got my monthly goals in the next quadrant. I got my weekly ones in this bottom one and then my daily ones there. And all those try to tie those together, try to put those in one so, so when I do my daily goals, if they don't line up with my weekly, my monthly, and my yearly goals, then I, I don't need to do them. If my, if my weekly goals don't line up with my monthly and my yearly goals, then I don't need to do them. If my monthly goal don't line up with my yearly goals, then I don't need to do them. That's how I've learned to weed out things that take my time away from what my goal is. And every, every now and then you have to reevaluate yourself. It's kind of like a ship going down in the water. It can get one degree off. And by the time you realize it, you are so far off course that you don't even know. So you need to evaluate. You know, I go through this Outback um, program, and they teach a, they teach that as, is a life unevaluated is not worth living. So you should always be evaluating, am I still going on the same track? Am I still where I'm supposed to be? Have I been pulled off course? All those. So we talk about those. So we develop a plan of action. We prepare a vocational plan. And what that is, is you put your name at the top, you put your goal, like ultimate goal. What do I want to be? Okay, I want to be a nurse, an RN. So I want to do that. So what's my current education experience? You know, I might have a high school diploma. I might have this. What are my current skills that make me good at that? It could be I'm a great communicator. I have compassion for other people. I'm good at customer service, attention to detail. Those are my current skills. What are my roadblocks? I don't have a car to drive. I need to, cert I need to be certified as an RN. Um, what are the things I need to do? Needed skills. What do I need? What kind of certification? What kind of education do I need? And then we set three sub goals. We call this a six month vocational plan. So our su first sub goal, I don't have a vehicle, so I need to work on getting my driver's license if I don't have it. Then I need to get an A job. That needs to be my next one. And I'm going to do it by a certain date. So like on our example, we'll have, um, I want to get certified in recreational therapy. Her goal, that was her goal. Um, her goal number one was to gather more information with regards to the specific career and requirements by the certain date, May 5th, 2019, right? Then there's sub goal two, to complete required certified training by June 5th, 2019. Then sub three, to find employment in the field of recreational therapy. So if you do that, you set these dates. So what I would do is say, okay, I'm going to study this, but I'm also going to get my A job by a certain day, whatever that A job is. Because then a dead, an A job doesn't become a dead end job. It becomes a stepping stone to get to where you want to go. So you're working your A job, your any job, in order to make money so that you can go to school at night so that you can become this therapist that you want to be or whatever it is. And also you could get a job, an A job within that field. So if you want to get in the medical field, then you get an A job in a hospital or wherever. You might want to be a janitor, whatever it is, right? And there's some other things that fall in. There's felonies that cause you not to be able to do certain things. But in the end, everybody can kind of work towards that. It just takes some longer than others because of the things they got to overcome, the consequences of their 
uh, issues. It doesn't make it unattainable. It just makes it a longer process. And they have to understand that. So we teach that in session seven. And then we go into session eight and we start visioning. We start writing our own vision and our vocational plan out. Our objective is to craft a vocational plan during that day. And it's based on tw- Jeremiah 29, 11. That says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will be, you will call on my name and you all know that. And then it says, see what I get out of that? It doesn't say one time that I know have the plans for you unless you're a drug addict or been a drug addict. I know the plans I have for you unless you've been a criminal. I know the plans I have for you unless you've done stupid things. It says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you. And that doesn't always mean money. That doesn't really mean money. That means just walking where you're supposed to walk and in the job or in the the situation that you are gifted for, that you have the skills for. And that's what that means. And it says, I have a plans to give you hope and a future. It doesn't say your future's gone if you do all those stupid things. He knows he has that. Will that process take a little longer because of the things you've done or the things you've made? Yeah, it's going to take longer, but that doesn't mean it won't happen. So we have to teach to be consistent and driven towards your goals. That's why it's important to write them down. I had one of our ladies, um, Catherine, who was on a previous podcast, shared in there that she went back and looked at her vocational plan and she had met all of those goals. That is amazing to me. There's a blank in the book, so they fill out a blank vocational plan. Then we go into session nine, which is a resume workshop. And we and resumes can be very daunting for someone that has a lot of um, gaps in their employment, don't really have a lot of experience and things they really want to do. So we do a lot of skills-based resumes that show that they have skills like um, attention to detail and all their soft skills. It's mainly soft skills. But again, most of the people that come through our program are going to get, by word of mouth, get jobs. And hopefully someone would take a chance on them. That's why we started the uh, staffing company so that we could then put them in staffing and let them build their resume so they have some other experience and things like that. So they do the resume workshop. We always need people to help with that. We always need input because I am the worst at resume writing. Um, I I can't teach. I mean, I teach it, but it's not well. Um, that's just not something I've done. I I don't know if I've ever got a job because of a resume. Um, it's mainly networking. So we do the resume. They have a blank in here. They fill it out. We put it on computers and then we go into the vocational plan again and we share our vocational plan with the people in our group and we write it up on a board and we let everybody see where they are. Um, so the session seven, um, we just kind of go over it and we, and we present it. The reason we do a lot of presenting in front of the class is because we want them to get used to talking person because that's another soft skill is presentations and communication with you know with other people and being comfortable doing that helps a lot when they're trying to get a job and, and feel better about themselves. So we work on that. And then we go to session 10, which is Ruth. And we talk about Ruth and how she was a person of character and she did, she took care of her family and she did those things that were good for her. So we talk about why do you think Ruth was tempted to complain about her situation or do you think she was, um, did Ruth look out for others just, or for, just for herself. And we use Ruth as an example of, Hey, you know what? Sometimes we have to sacrifice for the things that we know are right. And that's what Ruth did. She sacrificed. She gave up her whole family. She gave up everything to take care of her mother-in-law. She didn't have to do that. Sometimes we have to do things that we don't want to do. Then we go into session 11, which is a 30-second commercial. It's a commercial of themselves, telling who, how good they are and what they would be, how they would make a good employee. It's kind of your elevator speech, and that's what we um, need to we work on during that time. So they work on their elevator speech and we talk a little bit about Luke and we talk in there about how not long after the young son. So we're talking about the son and the father and how he left his um, father. And then he came back the prodigal son, which all of us can really relate to. And then we move into it and we share our stories on how we can do that. So that was that session. So now we're moving next week. We're going to talk about restore where we talk about them. We have employers come in, we do mock interviews and we do those things. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I appreciate you tuning in. Tune in next week as I bring you another part of Ransom Reprogram Curriculum. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to share it with everybody you know. 
wherever you get your podcast. I need your reviews. Go ahead and give me some input on what you think of these episodes and also our past episodes. And I appreciate you joining us. Until next week, y'all have a great week. Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared But I swear I'll never give up the fight With it.